Hi there, it's Sam from poodles.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today I have an envelope punch board project for you and I have got stripy paper going in two different directions so I will give you a quick tip um, as to how you get that. But this lovely dome shaped box, it's only taking four score lines. Guess what it holds? Two Easter eggs. Now these, are, these aren't these are cream eggs, these are Lindor eggs and that's only because I don't like cream eggs and I'm sick of passing them on to my children. I quite fancied eating them myself. But these are the same size as Cadbury's cream eggs and other sort of generic type eggs that you get at this time of year. And it will hold two beautifully. And I'm going to show you how to make them. So you need two pieces, well you need a piece of paper that measures six by six inches, which is 15 and a quarter by 15 and a quarter centimetres. And this is the Kaleidoscope Designer Series paper. And as you can see, it's got a diagonal stripe. But as you can see, my stripes go horizontally and vertically. So I will show you how to do that. You need your envelope punch board. If you want your stripes to go horizontally, you need to have your diagonal stripes going to the left. So horizontal left to right, stripes to the left, up and down, stripes to the right. And this is a tip that I saw on France Martin's channel, uh, Frenchy Stamps, and she was doing it with um, Soho Subway paper and she managed to get envelopes so that the writing was left to right or vertical and I thought it was brilliant so I want to pass it on. Can't take credit for it, it's her tip. So I'm going to show you how, I'm going to punch and score both of them but just show you how to build up one. So I want my stripes to be going left to right, so my diagonal lines are facing to the left. And your first punch and, punch and score line is at one and a half inches, which is 3.8 centimetres. And you do that on one side only. Then you turn it and slide it this time to three inches, which is 7.6 centimetres. Punch and score, turn it again, come back to one and a half inches, uh, 3.8 centimetres, punch and score, turn it for the fourth time, three inches, 7.6 centimetres, punch and score. That's all the scoring you're going to do. I, you could possibly see it slightly better on this side. So you've got four score lines, but actually they don't meet. You can see I've got, hopefully you can see I've got a score line there, but I haven't got a knobbly bit because that's a technical term. So what you need to do is come round and just punch. So you've uh, you've got your score line going up here to the score guide and just punch and you do that on all four sides so what you end up with when I move the piece of paper out punch board out of the way is that you've got four little divots sorry two divots on all four sides so this was the box that the punching and scoring with the paper going off to the left which is going to give you that finish so when I quickly fold it if I can find my lines it's only four score lines to fold I can't feel or see because I used stripy paper so when I fold it up my box is going to look like that so I will quickly do this one so I need my diagonals going to the right to get the vertical so exactly the same, one and a half inches, 3.8 centimetres, turn it, uh, three inches, 7.6 centimetres, turn it again, one and a half, 3.8 centimetres, turn it again, three inches, 7.6 centimetres, and then just join up the scored line to the score guide, punch, turn it round, punch, And punch and then feel with your finger because you can't see your stripe your lines in the light and punch and so that means that when I fold these score lines I'll just move that off my lap when I build it I'm going to have a box that folds that way so France Martin you are a genius thank you for that tip Right, so let me just round the corners of these. There we go. So all you do now is that you find your score lines that are to the left and right of the big triangle, not the little one, the big triangle, and cut into them. 
and I wonder if maybe you can see slightly better or if even I could see slightly better on the coloured side perhaps a little so there we go so I've got my four parts that are separate they're going to come in like that and that box is going to fold up so I'm going to grab some snail and come into these bits that you've just been trimming into and put some snail on all of those pieces and then just fold your box sides round same over here and just fold them up and so you pop your Easter eggs in if I hadn't eaten mine I would have some spares but I did, I nibbled <laughs> you've got to really so just gently fold in the sides we, we want to keep the dome the smooth dome shape going on so you're just gently pushing and had I scored these lines you'd end up with a square box but I didn't want that I wanted the dome shape so again just gently push and you're getting the shape already so I want to put some holes in because this has been closed with a candy dot um, brad and its base and then I have punched through can you see that with the four petal flower from the itty bitty punch pack which is probably my favorite punch set so you just slide it in and I've got my hole and that means that because of that shape the brad base is big enough to go through the through the middle part and then it will catch in the lowest part and then it won't pop open so what we're going to do now is I need to position where I want my brad to be so I'm going to fold it closed, bring it over, and I don't want it too tight, but I can actually position my lines. If I do that for you, you can position them so it just flows all the way around. So I want a hole about there. And because it's paper, it just pops through quite easily and quite quickly. Candy Dot Brad Base in. Hold it all back up, catch it. Made that a bit too tight, I think. If your brad base, you've made it too tight, just open it up slightly. There we go. So that's catching, and that's what's stopping it pinging open, which is very cute. And I've made these ones using Melon Mambo ribbon and ink and this one is Bermuda Bay and I've got in front of me Old Olive and Pumpkin Pie and I can't decide which I want to use so I'm going with Pumpkin Pie because that's the card stuff I've got closest to me so a little bit of stamping and this is this stamp is from the new Hip Hip Hooray um, card kit which comes with three rubber stamps and an ink and obviously after you've made all of the cards I think it's 20 cards and it's 17.95 you obviously get to keep the stamps and the ink afterwards so I love it isn't that font just gorgeous that is so lovely the other ones are hip hip hooray and just a few and actually I've, it came in a clamshell and I just put it into a spare clear mount block a uh, clear mount case but they're really nice and I love the fact that you get those to, you know you keep those afterwards brilliant so ticket builder punch I'm going to punch that out and it fits just nicely one of those, we'll have one in the pumpkin pie, don't need these little bits, and then one in black as well. And I'm going to layer all of these bits up, and I'm doing them close to one another, and often you'll see me using um, dimensionals to pop things up, I don't want to on this occasion, so I'm going to have that one over the black, and I want the, it's called, a, I call it offset layering, this pop possibly a technical term for it but this is just what I call it so it's offset to the top left with the black and we're going to have the pumpkin pie to the bottom right can you see that you probably see that on the paper better so it's just offset in two different directions I'm going to put a um, dimensional on the back of this one I'll just get to the right way around so I want it in the top corner I can put that up there. I'm going to grab a candy dot in the pumpkin pie, which is this one, and put it into the middle of that base. 
and obviously our candy dots come in all of our colours, all, all 40 of the colour collections, there we go, that's stuck in. And then I'm going to do my very best to tie a bow with the matching ribbon. So this is one eighth of an inch taffeta ribbon. Oh, that's not bad. It's not brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's not bad though. So I've got a little bit of wibbly on there. We don't. We won't worry too much about that. And then mini glue dot on the back of that. And up in the top corner. And that is my beautifully domed box that will hold two Easter eggs. And with this fabulous tip that um, I'm passing on from Frenchie. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Hope to see you soon. Bye.